you're not already a fan, hopefully this video will persuade you to check out some Jane Austen. Was that too cheesy? That was probably too cheesy, but I don't care at this point. Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you saw from the title, this is very exciting. I'm doing the persuasion tag. It was created by my fave Amrita for her group read of persuasion. I will link her videos somewhere above, below, probably both. If you're interested in joining in on the discussion, whether you've read it recently or not, all the details are in her video, but it is on the 30th of January. So if you're watching this as it goes live and you're a fast reader, you probably still have time to read persuasion before then. But but if not, I'm sorry, I should have gotten this up sooner, but you know what? Life happens sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, I am so excited about this tag, so let's get into it. Question 1. Persuasion, like many Austen books, has been successfully adapted to screen many times. Name your beloved on-screen adaptation of a book published before 1900. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I read this question, and then I figured out my answers for all the other questions, and then I came back to this question, and the whole time my brain just sort of reacted with a... I have never ever seen a movie sort of feeling. So I'm going to say that one of my most beloved adaptations is Clueless, which is in fact an adaptation of Emma, another Jane Austen novel. I actually read Emma and did a review of it in November? When was that? I don't know. It'll be linked up above if, in case you're interested in hearing those thoughts. But I love Clueless. I think it's a great movie. I think it's so fun. I've watched it so many times. Why did we stop making adaptations of classics as teen high school movies. That shit was great. It was so popular in the, like, I think the late 90s, very early 2000s. And I don't feel like I see it being done anymore. Maybe it's because I don't watch any new teen movies. I don't know. Let me know down below. I think they're great. I think if my teacher had sat me down in class and said, we're going to watch Clueless and then we're going to read Emma and we're going to talk about it, I would have been so much more likely to get really into the book as a teenager than I did with any classics I did read in my teens. So. I think we should bring this back. I think we should use it more. This might be a controversial opinion. I don't think it is. Let's move on. Question two. In Persuasion, Anne and Captain Wentworth really go through the ringer. What's your favorite angsty romance that isn't them? For this prompt, I've chosen This Is How You Lose Her by Juno Diaz. This is a short story collection which focuses on one man and all of the ways how throughout his entire life since his teens, he has been messing up his love life and screwing up his relationships with women he loves and just generally being a bit of a mess. This is not a traditional romance in the sense of the story of one couple, but honestly I haven't read that many of those, unless we're counting fanfic, which let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> but this is definitely angsty and there's definitely a lot of love at the center, so let's let's consider that. Let's, let's say that that works. Question three. Captain Wentworth is a naval captain. Tell us about a book featuring a lead character who is in a branch of the military. I've chosen Another Life by Peter Angel Helides. I hope I'm saying that right. I could not find a pronunciation guide on YouTube, so this is the first Torchwood spin-off novel from the Torchwood TV series which is itself a spin-off of Doctor Who. We're really just spinning all over the place here. I know Torchwood is technically outside the government and all that, but they definitely have like special ops military vibes, but like in a cool way. And also Captain Jack was in the military in his past, even if he's not currently. Again, hand waving, let's go with it. I read prompts for tags and I go, all of a sudden I have never read a book about anything. So I'm doing my best here. I actually binged all of the Torchwood novels about five years ago and enjoyed them a lot. I don't remember anything about anything that happens in them, but they were fun. I enjoyed reading them and I might even pick one up for a reread at some point. We'll see. Question four. British naval captains were famous adventurers. What's your favorite adventure story? I have to use this opportunity to talk about Space Opera by Catherine Valenti. This is a hilarious take on the first contact between humanity and alien life, which is of course far more vast and far more advanced than humanity is. Essentially what happens is that a one hit wonder band from decades ago is chosen without Earth's input to represent Earth in essentially space Eurovision, and it's just as amazing as it sounds. I love Eurovision on Earth and in space with actual, you know, humanities at risk type consequences. If I remember correctly, the band has to convince the alien council that they're sentient or something. It was great. I loved it so much. I think there's actually a sequel, or there's going to be a sequel. 
I don't know. I should look into that because this was so much fun. Also, I should just read more of her stuff in general. Question five. Anne is quite a dutiful sister. What's your favorite literary sibling relationship? This definitely isn't the relationship I want with my siblings, but Mrs. Everything by Jennifer Weiner is a great, beautiful look at two women from their childhood in 1950s Detroit through their adulthood in roughly the present, I think, and not just how the events of their lives affect each of them individually, but also how it affects the relationship between them and how the various ebbs and flows of power and influence and support and judgment change throughout the decades. I thought this book was so well done and that their relationship was so true to life in the sense that if someone told me this was the story of their mom and their aunt, I'd totally believe it. All of the nuance and the feeling and the complexities of an actual relationship were there and they were so interesting. Question six. By the standards of the time, Anne was a spinster. What is a book where the female lead is an older woman? I think I've mentioned this one once or twice before, but it's so great that I can't not bring it up again, especially for a question that references a spinster. I adored Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner, I think early in 2020? This is a charming little book that came out in the 1920s and it's set in the 1900s about a middle-aged spinster named Lolly Willows who has basically spent 40 years at this point being who her family expected her to be until one day she wakes up and says no. F you to everything that you expect of me and everything that I have been. I'm going out, I'm living my life. She leaves her brother's house in London. She rents a room in a small cottage in a tiny village in the countryside that she picked just because it had a good name and sets out to explore what life might look like from there on out, which does not go the way you would expect but it's great. Question seven. Persuasion is one of the most critiqued slash referenced books in English literature. Name a book whose plot or characters or central ideas reference another book. This feels like a bit of a cop out, honestly, but Hidden Sea, A Tale of the Once and Future Nutcracker by Gregory Maguire. I read and reviewed this one in December, so the link will be up there. Had some issues with it, didn't love it. You've probably guessed from the title that it's referenced slash inspired by the Nutcracker and one of the characters in that. Debatable how much that's just a bit of a marketing scheme and how much that actually influenced the story, but it was definitely inspired by and I had some things to say about it. So you can check that video out if you want more, but I don't need to spend any more time talking about this book, do I? Question eight. Captain Wentworth made his fortune at sea. Tell us about a book with a self-made lead character. This is another one that I've talked about a lot lately and I'm sorry, but I'm going to keep talking about it because it's amazing. It is Building on River by Jean Van Loon. It's a biography poetry collection. It's about a man who came to Ottawa in the early 1850s with his wife, his young child, and some carpentry tools and ended his life as a lumber tycoon and I I think he even served in Parliament at some point. He was very influential either way. And yeah, literally built his life up from scratch alongside the city. I've talked about it a lot before, including in my 2020 favorites, so I won't go into too much more detail now, but I'll link that video up here if you want to know more about why I love this book so much. Question nine. Persuasion has a lot to say about traditional gender roles. What's a book that plays with traditional gender roles? Well, I was going to say Orlando by Virginia Woolf because that one is like peak playing with gender roles. But then of course I remember that Emreta used that to answer the question in her video. So sort of be cheating to say that again, but you can blame her for the fact that I'm going to talk about The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave yet again. I know, I know. Again, I said in my 2020 favorites that I was not done talking about this book and I meant it. I don't know if play is the first verb that would come to mind when I think about gender roles in this book, but it does more than almost anything else I've read recently. Consider gender roles in a totally quiet, totally mundane, totally ordinary way that still has so much to say about the constraints that society puts on people, especially women, and how they react to it and the various ways that people either mold themselves into those constraints, fight back against them, them, what bothers people, how different people react to them. I just love this book, okay guys? And I'm gonna keep talking about it. I'm sorry. Question 10, which is optional, is finally, tell us a bit of trivia, a fun aside, a personal anecdote related to either Persuasion or any other work by Jane Austen. I really tried guys, but I'm boring and I don't, 
have that much to say about Austin. I haven't really read much of her stuff except for the one book. I've only seen a couple of movie adaptations. I don't have any cool stories, I'm sorry. But I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say to this question. And finally, tag some people. I am of course going to tag Nikki of Nikki's Books. I don't know if she's an Austin fan or read any or not, but she likes tags and these are some fun prompts, so hopefully she'll have some interesting answers for them. I'm also going to tag Bethan of Bethan Bruninga Sokoler because I know she is reading a whole bunch of Jane Austen both in January and throughout the rest of 2021 I think, and maybe she'll have some cool answers to this. I don't think I'm gonna tag anyone else at this point in time, although of course if you like this tag, please 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 do it and let me know down below. I would love to see your answers or let me know some answers down in the comments as well because let's talk about this stuff, right? As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.